Oh, man. The May 21st Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting will now come to order. Uh, first up, first item uh, is a review of the minutes, both the um, minutes of the special planning board meeting and the minutes of the regular planning board meeting. Uh, does anyone have any, let's start with the uh, special planning board meeting on May 7th. Does anyone have any comments on them? Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Motion to accept the minutes. Second. Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, then consideration of the uh, minutes of the meeting from April 22nd. Does anyone have any comments? Would anyone like to make a motion? Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Ocean House Common Site Plan. For those of you watching at home, the uh, 1226 Shore Road mixed use application uh, is not on the agenda for this evening. So just grab this. David Jacobson is requesting site plan review and a resource protection permit for Ocean House Commons, a 7,144 square foot mixed use office, two apartment unit building, and Village Green located at 326 Ocean House Road, and a resource protection permit to fill 3,500 square feet of RP2 wetland. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9, site plan regulations, section 19-6-4, town center zoning and village green requirements, and section 19-8-3, resource protection regulations. Um, so we'll begin by having the applicant summarize any changes made to the plan since the last meeting. Sure? Oh, I'm sorry, before we start, uh, Peter Curry wanted to make a statement. I just want to say for the record, uh, I was not able to be at the April meeting, so I missed it, at which this matter was considered. I have reviewed the material submitted then. I've been on the site walk. I've reviewed the minutes of that meeting, so I believe I'm still competent to continue uh, on the consideration of this matter, but if any members of the board disagree, I can easily recuse myself. Does anyone on the board have an issue? No. Okay, no. so you can continue, John. Thank you. Uh, John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, uh, representing Dr. David Jacobson for Ocean House Common. Um, what I'd like to do is to um, talk about several of the responses, our responses to the staff comments uh, that we uh, received on our latest uh, submission. Um, and then turn it over to Steve Bradstreet who will summarize some of his responses to the stormwater and then turn it over to Matt uh, to talk about some of the architectural samples that he brought along to show you. Um, I'm just going through um, in your in your booklet um, is Exhibit One, our, our cover letter that uh, responds to uh, many of the staff comments. I'm just going to go down quickly, um, starting with comments that were provided by the planning board uh, last month. Um, we <coughs> have. Uh, revised the focal area within the village green slightly uh, to uh, we relocated the flagpole to the rear of the sitting area uh, which was I think an appropriate um, comment um, we have added an up light at the base of the flagpole so that it can be lit uh, during evening hours We've added a three foot by eight foot concrete slab uh, that will be situated in the front of the focal area uh, in preparation for the uh, Veterans Memorial. We've added an electrical, con an empty electrical conduit that will extend from Ocean 
House Road to the focal area uh, for uh, any future lighting that the town may want to do um, within the uh, focal area. Uh, mechanical equipment, we've added a uh, catalog cut sheet uh, showing the specifications for the condensing unit that's found in Exhibit 7 of the booklet. Uh, with regard to the temporary walk, um, I guess our feeling on that is that uh, there will be, given the minimal amount of traffic during Phase 1, uh, we just felt that the construction of a temporary walk uh, was not feasible at this time. Um, Dr. Jacobson is um, prepared to put that walk, a permanent walk in uh, once phase, phase two um, is constructed uh, <clears throat> that will connect the, uh, the existing walkway with the uh, uh, not the existing, but the uh, the walkway in front of the, the dentist building uh, to Ocean House Row. Uh, the dumpster screening, we have, um, the dumpster is located 180 feet back from Ocean House Row. We've, it uh, is enclosed by a six foot high wood fence with a double gate. Uh, we have added, um, we've taken a, a birch, a river birch, and placed it um, on the side of the, uh, the wooden screen to help soften the, the wood enclosure. Uh, with respect to additional parking, um, if you remember, um, uh, planning board member asked if the applicant would be willing to add additional parking along the entrance drive. Um, and He's, you know, he's fully committed to uh, building out the, the entire project, but he just feels that um, given the parking spaces here at the town lot, uh, that if any members of the public want to park and utilize the village green, that there are plenty spaces uh, in, in this lot uh, to do so. On page three, uh, these are comments by Steve Harding. Um, beginning with the wetland impact, uh, we actually the, the square footage of the wetland impact had been placed on the plan, but we've added an additional note um, on L2, um, a, a label that has uh, that indicates the total amount of impact of the wetland. Uh, sanitary sewer capacity letter, we have attached in Exhibit 6 a letter from Steve Harding uh, that um, indicates that the town has the capacity to accommodate the wastewater flows from Phase 1. Uh, the existing conditions plan has been stamped. Uh, 5 and 6 have to do with uh, drainage manhole details, which we have addressed. Um, <clears throat> and we, we do uh, concur with um, pl uh, doing a test pit in Ocean House Road uh, over the water line where the water and sewer are going to cross uh, just to, uh, to confirm the, the depth of the water line. And we've put a note on the drawing to that effect. Uh, the road profile has been, has been uh, revised and addressed. Uh, number eight, site details. Uh, all of the site de details have been addressed in our, our current plans. And on the future building sites, <clears throat> uh, we've placed a note in a couple places where the future building sites uh, that will be planted with a reclamation grass seed mixture. Uh, stormwater comments, I'm going to let Steve uh, handle those. Under traffic impact, um, a, a, a note has been added to sheet L2 that addresses future uh, traffic impacts. Um, and as amended plans come through, um, are presented to the planning board, 
um, there'll be uh, an update in the traffic generation uh, to make sure that we don't uh, put, or to document where we are in terms of the, uh, the total amount of trips. Because once we get over 100, um, then that requires a, uh, a DOT traffic uh, permit. Okay, and then these are um, the following uh, Marines comments. Um, let's see, uh, pedestrian circulation. Um, the applicant is, um, as I mentioned, is fully, fully committed to um, building a sidewalk uh, from, that will connect Ocean House Road all the way around to the town lot. Um, as shown on the master plan. Uh, utilities, uh, uh, again, as amended site plans uh, are presented to the board, uh, we, we will include updated service letters. <clears throat> Under landscaping and buffering, um, uh, a label has been placed on the plan to confirm that uh, no removal of vegetation will take place within the 15-foot uh, uh, setback uh, on the southerly property line. So all that vegetation that's out there now will be preserved. Uh, additional plantings of the two focal points. Um, uh, this was a comment that was discussed at one of the planning board members' uh, meetings. Um, uh, initially, the focal points were a sort of a rectangular shape. Uh, we have uh, revised those, that planting bed, so that it's more um, uh, informal and um, natural looking. So, and we've revised the planting plan to accommodate that. Um, the lighting fixture, um, there was an issue regarding, we were just over the half foot candle uh, level uh, at the entrance to the project. Uh, we've included in this booklet an enlargement of the, uh, the photometrics that show that we are uh, below the half foot candle maximum. Uh, under noise, we've calculated the decimal level of the uh, uh, the condensing units to demonstrate that we are under the 55 uh, decibel level at the property line. Uh, under town center design standards, uh, Matt's going to talk about some of the uh, some of the revisions that he's made, um, as well as presenting. Uh, as well as presenting some of the architectural samples that we're proposing. And uh, under resource protection permit standards on page nine, um, there really wasn't, other than um, there was a comment regarding proposed stormwater flows. Uh, the majority of the, the stormwater flows actually come off of the town lot which uh, we have addressed in our, in our uh, grading and drainage plan. So that, that pretty well covers all of the responses that we've received to date. And I'm gonna turn it over to Steve just to summarize some of the stormwater changes. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Bradstreet with Ransom Consulting, uh, civil engineer on the project. Uh, some of the uh, latest uh, comments from uh, Steve Harding, I'd just like to uh, touch base on them. Um, he uh, had a question in regards to the grass under drain filter uh, swale uh, in regards to does that meet DEP requirements. Uh, and the actual detail that's on the plans was actually copied from a scan uh, from DEP's uh, BMP manual. But what we have done is we've added a note to that detail indicating that this is figure 7.1.1 of the manual. So that's now on the plans. His uh, second one was similar uh, in regards to the level up spreader um, and that it met DEP's requirements. 
that too uh, came right directly from the BMP manual. We just modified it a little bit. Um, it's actually from uh, figure 5.4 of the DP manual, so we added another note to that detail to address uh, Steve's comments there. Um, there was a uh, question in regards to subcatch at number three. The calculation appeared to be wrong because the phase one flow was higher than phase two. Uh, and Steve was correct. Uh, somehow, uh, the in phase one, the roof area for that building got added in there. And there's no building there in phase one, it's just in phase two. So once that's removed, that will also drop. So in other words, the flow for phase one from subcatchment three will be reduced by removing that impervious area. Um, uh, Steve also commented on uh, the flow that's going off the site from subcatchment number uh, four uh, that we did not uh, take into account to our advantage uh, infiltration that is uh, from the level up spreader, from uh, drip edges, from the wooded buffer, etc. Um, those uh, could have been taken into account, reduces the flow that's going off site. Um, we were far more conservative and uh, did not include those. I feel that it's a, a minimal adjustment. It does reduce it if we take that into account. So that's how we've addressed that uh, comment back to. Steve. Uh, the, I guess the, the other or the last remaining one was uh, in the 1st of May I reported to Steve so he could incorporate it into uh, the calculations of the town storm and water system that phase two 25 year storm had a runoff of 5.5 CFS. And um, that was done, let's say, in haste. I did not look at the actual travel path of that and got the 5.5. When we've refined it now, knowing what we're <clears throat> doing without the detention, et cetera, they reduced it to 4.62. So he asked which was uh, accurate, the 4.62 or the 5.55. The 4.62 is the accurate one. So the other comments that were related to stormwater, I think uh, John uh, touched on in regards to the details, in regards to uh, inverts on the focal points, pipe sizes, pipe slopes, um, uh, clear definition of the two drip strips, drip strips. One of them is under drain, the other one is just a formal uh, uh, drip strip. Those have been changed on, on John's drawings. Um, and we've provided a clean out where the connection for the stormwater pipe, the six inch drain coming from the filtration swales that capture the water coming off the town's parking lot over to the outlet from the focal point. We just teed it in. He asked if we put a structure there or a clean out. So we've provided a clean out there and have a detail on the plans for that. Um, and I think that was it you guys do. <coughs> Excuse me. In regards to the stormwater comments that uh, Mr. Harding had, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Okay. Um, would you like to continue, Matt? Oh, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Board. Um, briefly received a revised set of plans. Um, a couple of the items. Hey, on excuse them. me. Can you just state your name for? Uh, sure, uh, Matt Provencal from Mark Mueller Architects. Um, uh, first item, we revised the front elevation. We enlarged the openings and changed a few sizes uh, to get to the 50% number. I believe we're around 54% now. And that is exclusive of the top two windows and the gable end. So we were able to make that work um, with some revisions. Like John said, we updated the plan. We showed the mechanical condenser units and located those to ensure we were at 55 decibels at the property line. Um, and I have some, the board asked some <coughs> samples. So, if I may. Why don't you want to start at that end? Just 
tell us what we're looking at? So what we have is a, we have some samples of a cementitious siding material um, in a darker blue color that we were representing on our drawings. And we have a shingle siding um, with a lighter tone to it for our dormer at the front elevation uh, to contrast a little bit. We'd have some white trim, um, painted white columns uh, to accent, um, and that's, that's representative in our drawings, um, what you see here. And I can answer any questions if anyone has any. Any questions? Okay, great, thank you. And then finally, uh, I hope you've all had a chance to look through the application booklet. Um, exhibit two is uh, Steve's response letter to the stormwater <coughs> comments. Uh, exhibit three is Steve's uh, narrative to the stormwater report the front part of the stormwater report. Uh, exhibit four is the release, a draft copy of the release deed um, that will be the land that will be conveyed to the town, the 20,000 square feet um, village green parcel. So this is uh, the release deed and uh, the meets and bounds of that, the description. Um, exhibit five is a draft copy of the drainage easement, which will allow the town to enter onto our property uh, to maintain the, uh, the stormwater facilities that abuts the town lot. And exhibit six is a letter from Steve Harding uh, <coughs> confirming that the town has the capacity for the wastewater flow. Exhibit seven is a catalog cut of the condensing unit with their specifications. And exhibit eight is, uh, as I mentioned, is an enlargement of the photometric plan that shows the entrance with the town fixtures turned off. Uh, and it shows that at the property line, we're below the half a foot candle. Exhibit nine are the architectural plans and uh, Matt sh showed you uh, the samples. Um, and then um, we received, after we printed the uh, booklets, we received the uh, Army Corps of Engineers permit, uh, which you should have uh, for the filling of the wetland. And then finally, uh, we are, as we have mentioned in previous meetings, uh, there's only one waiver that we're requesting, and that's for a high intensity soil survey. Um, um, Stockwell uh, environmental consultants who, who perform the delineation of the wetland uh, use the Army Corps of Engineers criteria for um, which included uh, soil evaluation. Um, and except for that small pocket of RP2 wetland, the rest of the site is all upland and, and dry. And the soils consist of well-drained type A and type B soils. So we're requesting a waiver on the high intensity soils of it. That's it. Okay, great. Um, is there any member of the public here who wishes to make a comment on this application? Okay, well then I'm going to open the meeting to discussion by the board. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the applicant? John? My, my question is actually more for Maureen. Um, Maureen, could you just explain a little bit about the acceptance of the stormwater um, that the town is going to be uh, doing as part of this application? Sure, and this is um, an unusual situation. 
and the reason it's unusual is because it is the town center and the town has done a significant amount of planning in this area and has made certain commitments about how we want the town center to be developed. So um, just to, to recap that to make it understood why the town is taking the steps it is taking, there was a town center plan that was created in 1993 and that plan was then implemented by creation of a town center district in 1995. Um, the town then did a stormwater management plan for the entire town center also in 1995. Uh, 20 years later, the town uh, looked at the town center again. There was a second plan created, a much shorter list of goals and uh, seven goals and that was adopted unanimously by the council in 2014. A TIF district has been created for the town center which is not associated with a specific project. The point of the TIF, the funds from the TIF are spent on um, sidewalk improvements and stormwater improvements. So it's independent of any particular development or project, which is the way TIFs can be handled in other places. Uh, we did another stormwater plan as well. And the reason that I'm bringing all this up is because typically a developer is required to keep the stormwater flows on the property um, the same from pre-development to post-development. We're not treating stormwater in the town center that way because the, the typical way of doing that is to create a detention basin. And the town center is a place where we're trying to create um, a pedestrian friendly, concentrated, compact center of town. And detention basins don't really go with that kind of development style. So uh, what the town is saying to this developer is that we know that your, your flows leaving your property property are exceeding the flows that are coming off the property right now. So instead of having you uh, create a detention basin, which is inconsistent with our land use planning and our stormwater planning, we are telling you we want you to connect up to the town's stormwater system. And the town has agreed to accept 3.05 CFS for the 25 year storms, and you see Steve's nodding at me, um, for this phase of the development. And that stormwater will go into uh, stormwater lines that are constructed by the applicant in the roads of the new project and then those lines will connect up into an existing storm drain system that drains through the school campus and exit out at the Spurwick Marsh. And so for phase one, the town has committed to accepting all of those flows. Uh, we're fairly confident that the existing system has the capacity to accept those flows. We're not 100% confident. So the town has also agreed to uh, commission our own town engineer to evaluate the existing system we have. Um, and he has to look not just the existing system in its capacity, but all the areas that are draining into the system and figure out if it has enough capacity. If, if it doesn't have enough capacity, if for example, there are pipes that maybe uh, might be surcharged, it would be the town's responsibility to replace those pipes. Um, since we're pretty familiar with the system because they're connecting at Ocean House Road and it goes through the school property and there's been at least three site plans of that property um, over the years. We're fairly confident that we know what that system looks like. Uh, but we're committing to accepting all of those flows for phase one. Uh, we're hoping that this capacity study will be done by the end of September of this year. And after that study is done, we will be able to see if we are able to accept the flows for the remaining portion of the project as it comes in. Uh, we're also saying that if there are improvements that need to be made, we are more than willing to consider those for the future phase as well. Does that answer your question? Yes. And then so. Okay, Andrew. Uh, one question slash comment. Oh, well, the first comment would be that uh, all the changes look great. I don't have any issues with those generally. Um, I was thinking about the plan and the uh, the one thing I realized, you know, you, I, it was nice that you added the extra electrical conduit. The one thing I realized is there's no potential for water at the town center or the town site. So I didn't know if there was even a way to just 
add uh, another valve or a stub so that water could be in the future accessed from the green because just even for watering purposes or you know otherwise it's got to either come across from the town hall or tap into um, the proposed building which doesn't make sense it's not it's not public so uh, I don't even know how that would work with metering and anything but I just thought it might be something to consider given that everything's going in something minimal even on the on the what would that be side is that the south side closest to where the uh, the the walk comes in would minimally be something at least but So the water line comes in from Ocean House Road, comes in from the water main um, alongside the, uh, the, northerly, the northerly side of the entrance road, and it goes to a, a meter pit. Um, I, I think we could tap the water line before the, wa uh, before the uh, meter pit. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I have to consult with the water district to see how that source of water is going to be metered. Yeah, I, didn't, I had no yeah. idea, but I just thought as I, as well, I talk about this, I'm yeah. thinking uh, out loud here. But I think there is a way that we could provide a tap and um, direct it towards the village green for future water connection. I'd have to thanks. Work that out. Yeah, I, I mean, I think as long as it's something is feasible, that's not uh, either really hard or expensive. It seems like something minimal would at least uh, go a long way to providing some way to access water that might be needed in the future uh, without having to dig things back up. Uh, would be would be great. <laughs> Yeah, the Carol Ann. I have a couple. A question. I, oops, excuse me. I may have missed this, Steve, during your presentation. Um, Steve Harding's latest letter under number nine. Yes. He mentions drawing L5 to water services uh, are shown to be located within the drip strip area on the front of the building. Uh, Is, and I, I didn't uh, mention that. Um, that drawing has been revised to show um, the water lines within 10 feet of the building to be insulated okay. uh, because typically with uh, drip strips, they're crushed stone, a lot of cold air that gets down through them. So within 10 feet, at least that was the advice that uh, provided and, and those pipes will be insulated. All right, thank you. And I just wanted to mention and going through the comments, the responses to the comments, I I support the uh, applicant uh, not adding parking spaces and not doing this, extending the sidewalk. Which they indicated, they indicated on page two of their responses where they looked at um, temporary walkway, which we asked about in the last meeting and I'm, I'm in support of them not doing the temporary walkway. And they were asked about adding parking spaces for the Village Green during this first phase, and I am in support of them not having to do that, as they have indicated. Um, Joe, just in connection with that, I, I'm in support of uh, Carol Ann's position. <laughs> I if that makes so sense, I was that just take they a don't quick, have I to do that. So. <laughs> I want to just take a quick poll. Is there anybody on the board who disagrees with Carolyn? I'm, I'm in agreement. John's in agreement. Okay, good. Uh, Pete? Joe, just a, for Maureen, in your answer to John's question, do I understand correctly that basically the engineering decisions have been made that for phase one, the stormwater discharge can be accommodated within the town system. When we come to phase two and phase three, they will have to resubmit. And if 
it's determined that it's not adequate to handle the additional phases. Is, is this actually been teed up for the applicant that phase two and three may not happen? I mean, my conversations with, I, I like to remember that um, if a storm drain backs up and it floods, I'm not the one getting the phone call. Um, the public works director is getting the phone call, the town engineer is trying to figure it out, and so they are being appropriately cautious. Um, but the intention is for the town to take all of the flows, even at full build out. And we have tentatively identified a funding source if we need to make some improvements. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely trying to put the blocks in place, uh, but I think it's reasonable not for the town not to commit to the full build out until we have that capacity analysis done at the end of September. Right, but the town then is assuming the economic risk of the later phases generating more than the existing system can handle and it would have to make adjustments. So that's not something on the applicants. They, they aren't approved yet. Um, you know, that study could, I, I can't commit the town to that. I can tell you there are very strong feelings that that's the way we want to go. But there are still options available. I mean, the applicant is retaining ownership of the area behind the proposed green that was originally designed as a detention area. It is no longer designed as a detention area. If for some reason we have a really bad result out of this capacity analysis and the town says, well, we can't take more than phase one, they still have that detention option. But, um, so, and, and I like to point that out because I think it's important to hold the applicant harmless in this, this planning process. Um, but that's not what our intent is and that's not what our expectation is. Um, the pipes on the uh, west side of Ocean House Road are very large pipes. The, the expectation is that this should work. Um, well, just uh, sort of in connection to that, when we did the site walk, it was explained to us in detail uh, just how much fill was going to be required to come in here, and I think we all know and have an understanding about how expensive that is. So um, I appreciate what the applicant's doing uh, with regards to the fact that he's creating a village green for this town, which I think is uh, quite a contribution. Uh, to this town and then deeding it over. Um, so I'm happy to hear that the town is committed uh, to seeing this through with regards to the stormwater. I think it's a it's an even, uh, it's a very even trade, it's very reasonable, and I think um, both the town and the applicant will benefit from that. Um, and I also, and, uh, I saw how, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell can explain a little bit, but I think it was a five foot sort of grade down to that back area uh, where the grass is, and it's nice to know. I'd much rather have that as um, sort of more lawn as opposed to a detention area for storm water, which um, I'm glad that the, uh, the town has worked that out to hopefully make that um, keep going. So I, I'm excited for uh, the prospect of this this project and like I said I appreciate what the applicants doing with uh, not just the design which I think is very thoughtful and definitely has uh, this has been something that's a long time coming that we've looked at in workshop we've looked at on the board uh, for meetings and that we've um, done site walks for and taken in the public uh, perception or the public uh, input from this um, so uh, I'm excited for that. And just one question to Maureen. It's my understanding that any further phase on this for new buildings will have to go through site plan review. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, and I also want to say thank you for working with us for the moving a flagpole and the concrete pad. Um, we're assuming the town will want to move the memorial over there. I guess that will, uh, as with further, you know, scuttlebutt, that's going to take a while before everybody agrees to that. But, and also, if, if it matters, I said eight foot by three foot is plenty big enough. If dimensions are tight, two and a half by seven feet will work. You know, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> what's that? 
Yeah, that's that's what I. It's plenty of room to work with, and stuff may happen in the future. They may want a bigger one. So, thank you. I appreciate it, and for the uh, the outlet at the poll. So, anybody else have any comments? Pete. Yeah, I, I wanted to also compliment the applicant on what I think is a beautifully designed project, and certainly the. Uh, Village Green is something that's been on the <coughs> um, wish list for a long time. I think this is going to be a very nice job. I also just wanted to mention, for the record, my understanding that in the the design requirements of a in the town center district for a property that fronts on a street puts all the parking in back sides and back. And when the Village Green uh, piece of it was added to the zoning ordinance language was added saying that we might have to change the way we handle parking because of the configuration of the village green getting in the way of, of parking. So here we essentially have parking in front of the buildings which is not totally consistent but I, I, I think that you know we've decided this makes a lot of sense in this context and in this connection so I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, any other comments? I have a motion for the board to consider. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, number one, that David S. Jacobson is requesting site plan review and resource protection permit for Ocean House Commons, a 7,144 square foot mixed use slash two apartment, uh, excuse me, mixed use office slash two apartment unit building in Village Green located at 326 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to fill 3,500 square feet of RP2 wetland, which requires review for compliance with section 19-9 of site plan regulations, section 19-6-4 for town center zoning and village green requirements and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Number two, the plan for the development reflects the, nat the natural capabilities of the site to support development. Number three, access to the development will be on the roads with adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site uh, will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 19-7-8 off-street parking. Number four, the plan does provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development. Number five, the plan does provide for adequate collection of and discharge of stormwater. Number six, the development will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion plan submitted. Number seven, the development will be provided with an adequate quantity and quality of potable water. Number eight, the development will provide for adequate sewage disposal. Number nine, the development will be provided with access to utilities. Number 10, the development will locate, store, or discharge materials harmful to surface uh, uh, will, not. will not, excuse me, the, the development will not locate, store, or discharge materials harmful to surface or groundwater. I apologize for my mic if it's got feedback. Uh, number 11, the development will provide for adequate disposal of solid waste. Number 12, the development will not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. Number 13, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number 14, the development will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. Number 15, the development will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site and screening as needed. Number 16, the development will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. Number 17, storage of exterior materials on the site uh, that may be visible to the public uh, will be screened by fencing or landscaping. Number 18, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations, section 19-6-4 town center zoning and village green requirements, and section 19-8-3 the resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of David S. Jacobson for site plan review and a resource protection permit for Ocean House Commons, a 7,144 square foot mixed use office slash two apartment unit building and Village Green located at 326 Ocean House Road and resource protection permit to fill 3,500 square feet of RP2 wetland be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the plan 
plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated May 15, 2018. Number two, that the construction of the village green be completed um, and or a performance guarantee be in place for the remaining improvements if the village green construction has been commenced but is not yet complete and a deed be signed and offered to the town council for acceptance prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Number three, the drainage easements be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and signed by the applicant. Number four, that there be no issuance of a building permit nor alteration of the site until the plans and materials have been revised to address the above conditions and a performance guarantee has been provided to the town of Cape Elizabeth in the form acceptable to the town attorney, an amount acceptable to the town engineer, and all acceptable to the town manager. Second. Great. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? I have a question. Caroline. Do we need to add some language regarding the waiver of the soils? I believe the waiver was covered was when it? you deem the application complete, but I was going to look that up. I, know. I, I looked back at last month's motion, but I don't have the one from that. Well, yeah, it wouldn't have been last month. It would have been the month before, because last month was a tabling motion. Um, I just want to make sure if we haven't covered nope, it. If you cover could it. give me a moment, I will confirm that. How you like this? So the motion on March 19th included uh, complete in a shell, include granting the following waiver, a waiver from submitting a high intensity soil survey and instead submitting a medium intensity soil survey information and wetland mapping by Stockwell Environmental Consulting Inc. Great, thank you. So Any other questions? Okay, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> The next item on the agenda uh, is the Wentworth Special Event Facility Site Plan Reapproval. The Spray Corporation is requesting site plan reapproval of a special event facility located at the Wentworth Lodge, 10 Winters Lane. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and Section 19-8-15 Special Event Facility Standards. Um, so we'll begin with having the applicant introduce himself and summarize the application. Mr. Chair, members of the board, good evening. My name is John Green, representing the Spread Corporation regarding the Wentworth Lodge Special Event Facility Site Plan Review Renewal. Uh, we're request, requesting renewal for a previously approved special event facility located adjacent to Wentworth Lodge, 10 Winters Lane. The site plan was previously approved on June 21st of 2016 and expires June 21st of 2019. Uh, application will address compliance with the standards of section 19815, special event facility standards, and article nine site plan review. One of the requirements um, from the special event facility that is different from the previous uh, approval is that we uh, were required to provide a record of events that have been held, including the date, duration, number of attendees, and any complaints um, on file with the police department. Um, the uh, Spray Corporation has made no physical changes to the site uh, or the site plan since it was last approved. Um, the table uh, provided shows that we had 12 events over the last three years, um, uh, 2016, 2017, and 2018. The uh, 2018 number was low only because of a transition uh, in, in internal management where uh, only two events were held. 
Um, you can see the uh, number of guest, the number of guests, and the vehicles on most of these uh, are the same number. That was uh, basically came about because of a lease arrangement where guests uh, were only limited to 125 maximum and 50 vehicles maximum. We also provided a, a small table of the events proposed for 2019. Uh, what you'll see a basically a uh, somewhat larger amount of guests um, and vehicles uh, about the same. Buses will be provided to reduce the number of vehicles in the parking area. Um, basically, uh, regarding the submission requirements, all the requirements uh, are listed in this plan, uh, including a survey, the deed, uh, topography as shown on the uh, site plan itself. Buildings are located on the site plan. Traffic, access and parking, road layout as noted on the plan. Um, storm water, no permanent impervious surfaces proposed. The site is located on a hay field which readily absorbs water. No disturbance of soil or vegetation. Uh, therefore, there is no uh, erosion controls. Um, utilities, potable water, and adequate sewage disposal and electrical needs are addressed uh, as well. Uh, landscaping, there will be no change in landscaping. The natural site will remain as is. Um, no permanent lighting is proposed. Sign detail can be found within this uh, plan. Uh, events will not substantially increase noise level levels for abutters. The nearest non, non spread corporation abutters are uh, calculated in uh, increments of miles, so that's uh, uh, quite the distance outside of the overlay district. Um, exterior, there will be no uh, exterior storage. Um, the town manager has provided a letter of financial and technical capability, and there is no waiver of submission uh, items. Uh, in the uh, I'd be happy to go through the site plan review standards, but in the back, uh, in the amendment section, we have the deed uh, followed by a letter of support from the Zacharias, who are, they own a cottage within the uh, overlay district, um, and also a family member. A uh, soils map, medium intensity survey, soils map, traffic, uh, uh, analysis from BH2M showing that we do not meet the 100 uh, peak trip requirement that triggers a traffic analysis. Uh, site distance uh, uh, photographs and in the uh, text you'll find the distances for, for that. We've also provided uh, sort of a trailer version of porta potties um, at a rate of um, Basically, the requirement of 50, um, uh, let's see, one unit per 50 uh, guests. So, depending on the number of guests that are arriving, we will provide a trailered system that will meet that requirement. And a generator example, um, was basically uh, with specs showing that uh, at 23 feet there's 68 decibels. Um, and basically very quiet generator, and a tent lighting plan showing sort of a typical pattern of uh, lighting. And, uh, but I'd be happy to go through the rest of the site plan review. If you just let me know what you have questions about or would like to continue through each detail, it's fine by me. Uh, does anyone have any questions or wish John to go into this more deeply? Seems pretty comprehensive. Primarily okay. Because the site plan hasn't changed since their original approval. Great. So, seeing no public to comment, Carol Ann, how would you like to wing a motion for completeness since oh, okay. we don't oh, have yeah. one before us? Oh, all right. M may I suggest you can probably use the motion for approval and just slightly adjust it? I'll do that. Right. Motion for the board to consider. <laughs> Skip findings and facts. <laughs> uh, 
No, it's not going to work, Maureen. Uh, give me a second. You need to flip back to the motion. My, my apologies. Staff I, I'm, did not provide you with a motion. I, I'm, I was skipping over the findings of that. Yes. Uh, so I want to go to the first finding. I think you want to use the, the top first of page six. Top of page six. Just to be it ordered that. Yeah, that's where I was. That's where. It was. Okay. All right. Motion for the board to consider, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Sprague Corporation for site plan review of a special event facility, facility located at Wentworth Lodge, 10 Winters Lane, be deemed complete. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. I, it was. All right, great. Moving on, uh, does anyone see the need for a site walk for this? No, and just for the record, we did a site walk. I know there are new members of the board that weren't part of the board back uh, when we did that site walk, um, but that was part of the original site plan review. And I've actually been to an event there, so I'm familiar with the site. Any of the members who were not present object? I would like to go to an event there. <laughs> <laughs> but I Dan? Don't I'll second that. I, ob <laughs> I object. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a, it's a hay field with a beautiful view. <laughs> okay, so we're all agreed no, sidewalk is not, necess ne not necessary. Okay, um, any further discussion then on the project? No? Nope. Do I have a motion? Jim? A uh, motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Spray Corporation is requesting site plan review of a special event facility located at the Wentworth Lodge, 10 Winters Lane, which requires review for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-8-15 special event facility standards. The plan for the development reflects the natural capabilities, capabilities of the site to support development. Access to the development will be on roads with adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 19-7-8 off-street parking. Planning board finds that provision of 20 foot wide parking aisles is adequate based on the normal imprecision of adequate, of attendant directed parking in an unlined hay field as long as clear access for emergency vehicles is provided at all times. That was probably a hard sentence to come up with to the, you know, parking in the field, very good. The plan um, does provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development. The plan does provide for adequate collection and discharge of stormwater. The development will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion plan submitted. The development will be provided with an adequate quantity and quality of potable water. The development will provide for adequate sewage disposal. The development will be provided with ac access to utilities. The development will locate store or discharge, uh, will not locate store or discharge materials harmful to surface or ground waters. Development will provide for adequate disposal of solid waste. The development will not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. The applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. The development will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. The development will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site and screening as needed. The development will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. 
Storage of exterior materials on a site that may be visible to the public will be screened by fencing or landscaping. The scope of the special events will not exceed the maximum limits for special event facilities. The temporary nature of the parking and sanitary waste facilities is adequate to comply with site plan standards. No special event structures are proposed that are subject to building codes. Additional restrictions um, have not been imposed on the operation of the special event facility. The, adequate substan the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and Section 19-8-15 Special Event Facility Standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Spray Corporation for Site Plan Review of a special event facility located at the Wentworth Lodge, 10 Winters Lane, be approved subject to the following conditions. The approval does not include or grant permission for hosting special events in the Wentworth Lodge building. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? I do have a question. Caroline? Do we... Do we want to include the, there will be no permanent storage of items on, on site in addition to or in lieu of number 17, the storage of exterior materials phrase? Yeah, you could do that. Since, uh, since it's explicitly stated in the application, there'll be no permanent storage of materials. Mm -hmm. Do we want to change 17 to say no permanent storage? That's my question. Do you want to propose an amendment to number 17? I, I'm, I was just looking for a reaction. Before, yeah, right? that sounds good. Why, okay. John, is that? Is That's it? perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, so, I offer that as an amendment. So I should I just say storage of materials and take there, out the word exterior? There will be no permanent storage of items on site. Okay. okay. I have no problem with that. There will be no permanent storage of materials on site. Okay. Yeah, friendly amendment, yeah. Okay, and I agree with it since I seconded it. So. <laughs> <laughs> now where do we put this? It's, it's number it's 17. Placement number, finding number 17, there will be no, no permanent, permanent storage, storage of exterior materials on the site, period. Yes. Okay, so we replace 17. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. and I'm glad you had no noise complaints. I was very pleased to see that. Any other discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Motion passes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. Seeing no public here, we can move to the final. Motion, motion. we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>